What's up everyone, Chris from Full Steam Designs. Today I'm going to be turning this clamp into a miniature English wheel. I'm going to use some of these Harbor Freight dies, and the first thing I need to do is make some sort of saddle that'll hold these dies. So this wasn't the original project that I had planned for this week, but a podcast that I listened to, the Clamp Podcast, is doing a challenge where you have to make or modify a clamp, and I thought this would be a pretty interesting project, so let's get to it. All right, so these came out pretty good. Everything fits together nicely. Now, I realize not everybody has a mill. Uh, that was just probably the best machine that I have that can, you know, quickly and accurately cut these holes. There's no reason why you couldn't do it with like an angle grinder and then just come through and finish the slot off with a file to get it cleaned up nice. Um, you know, it's just gonna take a little bit more effort to do it that way. So what I do want to do though, and I am going to do this with an angle grinder, is I want to put, like cut some angles on here just to keep it out of the way so it's not interfering with any material. And then after I cut this angle on here, I'm going to come back and I'm going to drill and tap a hole. Because as you can see, these are obviously going to slide out of here and when the one is upside down it needs something to be able to hold it in so I'll put like a little set screw in there.
All right, so I'm not gonna make you guys watch any more of that. Obviously, this tap is pretty worn out. I actually bought this probably about 15 years ago. It was when the first Harbor Freight opened in Albany, New York. So on top of being pretty old, it's also from Harbor Freight. So, uh, and then also, I'm sure some of you guys were cringing when I put the end mill in the Jacobs chuck. I just did that to you know spot those holes and get a flat area. Uh, I wouldn't do that when I was milling. So anyways, we're making some pretty good progress here. We've got these holes tapped. So now that's gonna hold this top die in so that it can't fall out. And now what we need to do is come up with how we're going to attach them to this frame. So the top one is just going to get welded onto here. The bottom one needs to get attached to here, but this is able to move. So we need to come up with some sort of way to keep this rigid. All right, so I had to flatten the sides on this just so it'll fit in this pipe here. And then I had to notch this out so it'll fit over this part of the body. And I mean, I could have thrown this in my mill and knocked it out in a couple minutes, but I just wanted to show you guys there's more than one way to do stuff. You know, don't get discouraged just because you see somebody using a piece of equipment that you don't have. So now I have this part here, which is a little smaller. This will fit inside here. And this will go together like this. And then as I turn this screw, this will move out. So this is gonna be attached to our lower die. Our upper die will be attached to here. This will be attached to the frame. And then inside here, this piece will be attached to here. And I obviously have to shorten these a little bit. So I'm gonna do that and then I can weld everything up.
right, so I probably should have addressed this a little earlier. Uh, this is the inside pipe, and then this is the outside pipe that I used. And there is a little bit of slop in there. There's about uh, eighth inch on either side. So I needed a way to fill that gap. So what I did was I ground the ends of this and kind of made like a swage. And then I took this piece of copper pipe and pressed it through it. Uh, I had to take it to the anvil, smash it with a hammer, and that kind of stretched this metal a little bit. I was able to pull it off and then flip it around. Again, push it through the uh, press and then hammer it some more. But I ended up with a perfect fitting copper collar that will slide right over this. And then this is gonna get pulled into here. So there was just a little ring that held this on, like a little hog ring, and I was able to remove that. So now I can put this all back together. It shouldn't have any play. And then I can weld this other side on. All right, so here it is. I'm really happy with how it came out. So you probably saw I had to make a couple changes there at the end. Um, I added this little spacer because it seemed like this gap was too much between the wheels and it didn't need to be that big. But when I did that, then I couldn't get the wheels out. So I had to notch this piece. Uh, it doesn't really affect anything, but now I can get them out. And I did add a little grub screw on the side here just to make it so there was even less play in here. Um, and I did use that tap again that I said I wasn't going to. I promise that's the last time I'm going to use that tap. All right, so I think the last thing we need to do is test it out. I've got some 50 thou aluminum and 18 gauge steel.
definitely able to put some shape in that panel there. And in here with the steel. And you know, it works fine as a bench unit, but what's really cool about this is that you could bring it to like the fender of a car or something and use it on there for smoothing out dents or maybe putting a little, little extra shape into a uh, fender flare or something. I hope you guys enjoyed the project. This was a lot of fun for me to make. Please don't forget to like and share the video and leave a comment that really helps me out. If you haven't already done so, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. Got more projects like this coming, more stuff on the car coming, um, different woodworking and metalworking projects and all sorts of stuff. So make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification so you find out about everything. Thanks again and I will see everyone over on one of these other videos.